so this is lecture 2 uh, regarding the classes okay from the MIT lecture using the creative common license okay so now we will again see so last time we discussed how we define a class and we discussed about a point a uh, vector class okay so now let's try to see in the vector class a point consists of the x coordinate and the y coordinate okay so in fact this is also a kind of related object okay a point you can also make point as a class because it has two related entities those are x coordinate and your y coordinate next what happens is your vectors now consist of two points okay and those are the start and end points okay so now we try to think that when we know about classes so can we make our vector class look more interesting okay looks more uh, to look more sleeky okay it means it looks very simple so how to make it so we saw that okay for a vector we were defining a start point and end point so for start point the start x coordinate and start y coordinate for the end point start x coordinate the end x coordinate and the end y coordinate but here if you think so can we say that okay the class vector instead of making it as four points the four coordinates okay can we make it as point start okay point start okay so point start and then point end okay so can we make it something like this so that it becomes much more simpler and small and so yes i think it can be done if we define point also as a class okay so class point now it will have int or you have double double the x coordinate and double your y coordinate okay so if we define the point like in a class with double x and double y then your vector becomes a class with two members that is point start and point end okay so this is there and that's explained here if you see in this slide so now your point so this is the vector start and end points so vector initially we had defined like this the double x start x end y start and y end so this was a little big still because we were handling four coordinates okay but it is basically now a two point so how to handle this so one thing is okay so just let's have this uh, short interruption so instead of vector being like this so what we do so we make it now as a point consists of x and y coordinates okay so we will now try to make a point class okay so this is a beautiful small point class that we make okay so let's try to so this is a point class where we have public double x and double y so x and y coordinates are defined here the point consists of x and y coordinates and now your vector consists of two points start and finish okay so this makes your code look much more beautiful okay and much more manageable now the point consists of x and y coordinate this is an entity and it, which has two attributes x and y coordinates so this can be made as a class because any class is a user defined type with certain attributes so for a point x and y coordinates are its attributes so we define point like this a vector now consists of two points start and finish so this is very beautifully shown here in your mit lecture as point x and y it's a class first one then you have a vector which is which has attributes the points which are both also a type of class okay so point start and point end so this explains that okay you can have classes inside which the attributes are also classes okay so vector consists of two points start and finish and the fields so important point to note here is your fields can be a class itself now so we define the vector one so point class point public double x comma y class vector point start and end so in your main how you define the point 
so for that what we do in main we say that okay vector like something like int x we find one instance of it vector vec1 okay so now it allocates memory for your vector and what is vector so it had one instance of vector which had in, in turn two instances of points but now they are both asking that okay what are the x and y coordinates of your start and end so how we assign it so last time we saw using the dot operator so vector one dot your x coordinate okay so your vect1 dot start will give you the start point in the start point you want to access the x coordinate so you access like this if you want to access the start dot y it means in the vector one you want to access the point start and in that you want to access the y coordinate okay so this is the rule you do how you access the met the attributes then let's see so that's what is being done vector one dot start dot x is three so similarly now they are doing vector one dot start dot y coordinate is four then you have the end vector the x coordinate is five and your vector dot end dot y is six okay so now you have defined both the points here okay so if you see and this is beautifully shown also so then what can be done so now this is there so we define another vector too also okay so we were not satisfied with just one vector so we wanted one more vector which is vector 2 so instance of vector is again given so vector 1 is there that is fine we have assigned code for assigning values to them okay but now what about vector 2 so we just defined a vector 2 now again we have to write all these four things okay so this becomes now again complicated that you are trying to access all the member functions so even though what is there that we try to now write less code in your vector class but still when writing the value of those points we are now needing four different lines for writing the code vec one dot start dot x okay so still these many lines are required and the code is becoming cumbersome with this dot operators okay so what to do okay so this is the next question what to do now let's try to see what to do again one thing is vector 2 dot start is equal to vector 1 dot start okay so this is what beautiful thing okay so let's try to analyze this piece of code now instead of writing again like this which i was expecting but this is mit the guys are smart so i should have understood that okay vec2 so they're not going to write all of these again so what they did vec2 dot start they just said that it is equal to vec1 dot start great now you don't have to write dot x for it also okay so two lines of code now 50 percent reduction that's what is mit okay assigning one instance to another copies all the fields so if you do like this this is basically equivalent to vec2 dot start dot x is equal to vec1 dot start dot x and similarly dot y is equal to dot y okay so this is what is happening here okay so assignment assigning one instance to another copies all fields okay so this is there so similarly now what they do vec 2 dot start dot x is 7 so now assigning one instance to another copies all fields but now they are doing vec 2 dot start dot x they are making it 7 okay so making it something different that is also there okay 